Hey everyone, before we get into today's episode with Grant Gallagher, I just wanted to take a second and explain that in today's episode, Grant's going to be talking about his personal uh, time struggling with COVID-19, which he had in early December of this school year. He wanted to talk uh, on this episode about what he went through, and we did a check with his mom uh, before we rec- after we recorded the episode to make sure that it was okay to share to everybody. So everyone was in agreement that his story was very worthwhile, and he wanted to share it. So we are going to Uh, air it today on the podcast. Uh, He hopes that everyone listening will get a real sense of what it's been like for some students if they have gotten COVID-19. So uh, I think this is a unique opportunity to hear from a student about what they went through during this process. So here is the episode with Grant Gallagher. Welcome everybody to this episode of the Ninth Grade Experience podcast. Uh, we're we're trying to get some more student voices back on the podcast these days. I know we've talked to a lot of adults, but um, we put out a message board post for students to talk about how their ninth grade year was going. And our guest today uh, contributed something that caught my eye. And he's actually part of the game club that I'm an advisor for. And we actually just finished our game club meeting. And I asked him to stick around and talk about what he had posted on the board. So I'm talking today to Grant Gallagher. Um, a freshman here at Emmaus High School. So Grant, thanks a lot for joining us. Of course. Uh, I'm excited to share. Okay. So um, I just found out um, Mr. Romali popped in right before we started recording and I found out that Grant is a part of the Jasper program as well too. So we'll ask him a little bit about that and, and some other stuff. So usually Grant, I like to ask everybody first, how's your ninth grade year going or what's your ninth grade experience like? Um, and we can, uh, you don't necessarily have to talk about what you posted on the board yet, but overall, what has your ninth grade experience been like? I feel like my ninth grade experience so far has been pretty incredible so far. I've met so many people, uh, I think I'm making a lot of friends here. Like I usually, I only came in here from eighth grade. I used to be at uh, Exeter, which is like in uh, Birdsboro. And I just came here and I didn't make as many friends, <clears throat> friends as I thought I would. Then this year, I feel like I'm connecting with a lot more people and especially with the games club. It's just, I'm relating with people playing these games and like acting myself. Sometimes in school, I feel like I have to um, act differently to appease people's personalities and stuff. And I feel like with the virtual stuff, I've been having a better time than being inside. Even though on the inside, it is better for sociable and you know some other aspects, but I feel I am learning just the same, maybe even better. And it's interesting you say that because we're right now today, we're recording it on our first day uh, back in the virtual setting. So or in our hybrid setting here. So we do have some people coming into the building. Are you coming into the building at all? Or are you going to stay remote the entire time? I believe I'm actually going to stay remote just because of my experiences with COVID-19, as I stated in my post. And I feel like I don't want to contract it to give it to my mother or my brother or any other people in my family. So we'll... Yeah. So we'll get into the, your post, which was really cool. Like it was interesting that you shared it and I'm glad that you did. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll jump into that in a minute or two here. Um, but I being part of the Jasper program, I know that's one of the newer programs here at Emmaus high school this year. Um, and Mr. O'Malley works with students in that Jasper program, but what has the Jasper program been like? Um, do you have any thoughts about it as we're kind of, t- as we're finishing up the first half of the year here, I know you're in, uh, the Jasper for English and math. And then in the second half of the year, it's science and the drafting and design class. So what, what is your impression of Jasper been? So when I first heard of Jasper, when I uh, came here in eighth grade, they, they were just starting it up. Like it only started like last year, the year before I came. And my mom just thought it was a really good idea. And it was, it's more project-based and community-based. Now the classes that are included are science, social studies, ELA, and I believe one more, but I'm not a hundred percent sure what that is. Math yeah, that. Is- Yep. That class is a dra- It's called, I think it's called design or desa- drafting and design. It's like a, it's like a kind of a hybrid of a lot of different classes and that's coming up in the second half of the year, but go ahead. Sorry to interrupt there. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. That brings about my mind that that's going to come for the second half of the semester and it takes um, your computer classes. Um, like the point of it, but Jasper so far has been a great experience. I feel like the projects are really showing my creativity 
I, I really doubt myself that ha I have very little creativity, but it feels like these projects have been showing another side of me I haven't seen in a while of creativeness and other things, other unknown things. And that's really cool. Like, have you found um, there to be like working in the uh, virtual online? Have you found that it's been hard to do like collaborative projects or what is the pro what has the process been of like doing projects uh, in this kind of environment needing to like work uh, remotely with people? Well, I've found that doing mostly solo projects has been beneficial with online, but with group projects, it is very difficult because sometimes people are very shy and they don't want to show their face or they don't want to talk whenever on the Zoom. Like that's not a problem, but it's just that it's kind of difficult to do this work and some other things. And then I feel that though the projects are turning out great, I feel like the solo projects are doing better than the group projects, but you know, both of them are doing very well. They're teaching us more things. I feel like my favorite one so far is um, me creating a little horse out of clay in uh, social studies. It was just like a weird thing that I never thought I could do. And yeah, I feel like the projects have been doing fairly well. For me was just out of curiosity, like, was it what was the the purpose of creating the clay horse? It didn't, I know Leonardo da Vinci that did like a clay horse. Did it have anything to do with Leonardo da Vinci or was that a little bit, a little bit later in the game here? Uh, it was actually part of the civil war. And oh, okay. Mr. Carolla, which is the director of uh, social studies, at least for ninth grade, he said, uh, this is just a project to express your creativity and about something you really like in the Civil War. And I was like, oh, well, I really like horses. So I looked up cavalry units and then I decided to make a cavalry horseman. And yeah, that's where it went. So that's pretty neat. So, you know, right now we have students that are thinking about classes for next year. So if they're a ninth grader coming up, I know that there are lots of resources for Jasper. So it's, it's good to hear a student last year, we had Mr. Mahalik on the podcast to talk about Jasper. And now we're having somebody kind of here to talk a little bit about their experience. So for you, it seems like it's been a really positive experience, even with dealing with the, uh, you know, the remote learning versus in-person learning. So it's kind of good to hear. Uh, so a nice little plug here for the Jasper program. Uh, but that's not why we we wanted to have you on, but it's a great segue into what we were talking about. So, you know, when we posted this message up, uh, the first couple of days, there weren't very many people that responded to it. And then today, because I think the due date was today. So I think there was like a flurry of answers that kind of started coming in. And I saw that you had posted something. Um, so I'm going to read it right now just to kind of share um, what the response was. And then we'll just have a little bit of a conversation with it because it caught my attention. So are you okay with me reading it as you wrote it? A hundred percent okay with this. All right. So Grant wrote today on the message board. He wrote, I feel that 2020 has shown how calm I can be under cer certain situations. Uh, I was one of the many that received the COVID, received COVID-19 uh, it was not as bad as other cases, but it gave me a first person perspective on how bad it can affect you emotionally and physically. When I was, when I first was told I had COVID-19, I didn't know how to act. I was told to quarantine in my house, but it also leads to my mom and brother to be quarantined as well too. So after a little, it was getting to my head that I could not even be in the same room as my mom. It hit me and made me very tired. And I didn't sleep after a while. Once I went to bed, when I was lifted off my restrictions, I hugged my mom for a solid minute and it showed me how much affection someone actually needs. So I really like, there's a lot to kind of unpack and talk about here in that, you know, in your reflection here, which we really appreciated you sharing. Um, but first, uh, ob the obvious question is, how are you feeling now? Like what, when did you, when did you find out that you had COVID-19? Um, when I found out I had COVID-19, it was late December, 2020. Okay. And my, also my sister and her boyfriend contracted it. And I believe that is where I got it. Before. Okay. So you, so it's a more recent thing. So how are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling great. A couple of weeks, a couple of weeks strong. It's been going good. My lungs are feeling great. I have no other symptoms that would show that I have a cold or cold like symptoms actually to show COVID-19. I feel wonderful. So you actually got it. It sounds like looking at the time or thinking about the timeline, you, you got it while we were on our holiday break. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I messed up the date. It was actually late November. Oh, late November. Okay. It was over Thanksgiving and 
I did contract it, yes. It was just because um, my mom actually had to go out of town to go do something with work and I had to go to my sister's and her boyfriend's house and I stayed there for the weekend. Then after, my mom started seeing symptoms of like, you know, runny nose, sore throat, all that thing, all that jazz. And she also saw they had glossy eyes and she always knows that at least with my family that she's like, oh, you're gonna be sick if you have glossy eyes. And I'm like, I don't believe you. And then we went to the doctor and she came back in like two minutes. The faster they come back, that means you probably have it. And then she said, I have, and I was like in disbelief. I was like, what? I didn't know I had it. My mom was like, told you so. <laughs> so, so you had it there at the, the, so at the end of November and thinking about it now, like, so you're feeling better now, but when you first got the news, like you said that you were kind of nervous about it and kind of the reaction. So what was like, you know, we hear all the time in the news about like how it affects students and, you know, kids of your age are, you know, affected, but not a hundred percent, like they don't get the full brunt of it. Um, so when you first heard the news, you kind of seemed like in that little reaction you just had, it was kind of like, eh, okay. But like, how are you feeling when you kind of found out? Uh, you know, when I first found out I was in kind of disbelief, but once I settled in, all of a sudden I was like quarantined in my room. I was like, this is that bad and then I started feeling and it I started dreading me and I'm like physically like push like it just needed all my energy focused on this disease and it's just crazy how much it pulls from you to focus on it and you were kind of just stuck there because you were quarantining so you were kind of stuck on your own and not didn't have really a lot to be able to like pass the time or anything were you able to continue working on your school stuff or did you kind of just shut it all down so you felt better I decided to continue my schoolwork. It was pretty difficult just because my mind was, you know, focused on trying to get rid of this disease. I continued schoolwork for a while and, you know, I got cured. It was good, but I wasn't allowed to see anybody. And I wasn't allowed to hug anybody. I wasn't allowed to get any affection. Like usually my uh, grandmother used to come down sometimes, but she wasn't allowed to come down because I was sick with it. And my mom and my brother were also quarantined, so they couldn't, my brother couldn't go to work. He works at the veterinary, veterinary school, and he also works at a vet house. And I'm like, I feel so bad. Like, I don't know. So, yeah. So I think one of the things that you're talking about is kind of like, you know, we know physically like students, you know, for the most part, will recover from it. And you were talking about maybe the long-term repercussions, but I think one of the, the things that maybe we often overlook that students, especially your age might also be going through is that mental part of like, you know, needing to quarantine, needing to kind of stay away from people that you're used to seeing. So it seems like for you, that was definitely the hardest part of the whole experience. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Like I'm so used to just like right now I'm just walking by them and saying hi and stuff. Like I couldn't do that. I had to wave at them from afar. Like, you know, that little hug thing where you like do this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <hug> them, really. <laughs> it's just like it did a mental toll, like on top of schoolwork and like getting up and do this like routine. And it just punched it and just made a new hole in my mind to do this and do that and do nothing normal. So how long did it take you like into December to start to feel like I'm just going to use normal-ish again? Like how, like, did it, did it take a long time for you to start to feel back to your normal self? Um, the doctor said it would take five weeks for it to be gone. And in those five weeks, I did feel a little bit normal by week three but it was still was in the back of my mind that I still can't see these people until the day the time is up and it's just it made me upset and sad and I couldn't sleep at all and that's kind of yeah that's really you know you know and I guess at this point it would have been right around Christmas time uh like that holiday break time that you might have been allowed to start seeing people again. So it's holiday time and those kinds of things. Uh, I think we're past like the five week window now. So have you been in contact with those people again and like kind of been able to see those people or are you now, now that you've had it, you're kind of like not trying to not interact with people to kind of keep the spread down. Yeah. A week before Christmas, um, I actually felt better. So it was a little early from what the doctor diagnosed, but 
It was very nice. I did get to see my entire family. Even my brother came from uh, California. We haven't seen him in a while, so. And it was very nice to hug them and like, you know, and we did like a little dancing and stuff. We opened presents. It was amazing just to feel that affection around like me, like an affection bubble that I just have. <laughs> you always and, need it. And I guess too, after you go through that experience of like, you, you think like, you know, oh, I got, I have COVID-19, who knows what this is going to eventually do to like then know that you're A, feeling better and then B, being able to interact with those people again. I'm sure you kind of take a deeper appreciation for those things. You said that you really appreciated that, you know, ability to do that. And it was something that you always valued, but now I get, I would assume that you feel a little bit more value on those interactions that you now get to have again. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I feel, I feel terrible for every time I hear in the news about all these people not seeing each other and how many deaths, I believe it's up to 400,000 deaths in America alone. And I am extremely lucky that I'm not one of those people. And I hope yeah. that no more people have to suffer like I did. Absolutely. And, and so if you were to like um, talk to like students or like ninth graders or like somebody that, you know, about your experience, what is like one thing that maybe they don't under, like, I think you've talked a lot about the mental part. That's kind of like the under talked about part, but like, if you were to kind of um, talk about your experience or give like one thing that maybe is also another like thing that people might not expect or weren't, you know, it's maybe underplayed about the situation. Like what might you say? That's a good question. I feel a lot of it is, I feel a lot of the physical things are talked about, but you're right. The mentality of people with COVID-19 is not talked about as much. I feel with that, just that affection that you owe everybody needs. Like sometimes you're like, oh, I want time away from my family for a while. Like this is great, but it's, it really isn't. Sometimes you need that affection. You need to have love need to see people interact. I don't know, talk, do anything. <laughs> I know. And I think it's like, you know, as we're now into like almost a year, almost a year now in March, like kind of how this is gone the long way. I think that's one of those things that a lot of people are missing out on um, is that interaction time and, and those kinds of things as well too. Um, so, you know, it was funny before we started, you're like, I don't know if I'm going to have enough to, you know, talk, be able to talk enough to fill an episode, but we were already at about 15 minutes of talking here, which is, you know, a, a good amount of time. So I'm just trying to think of, you know, anything else that you want to share about your ninth grade year, you know, obviously you have an interesting story with Jasper and then you have an interesting story to kind of, you know, overcome COVID and kind of talk about that, you know, very honestly about some of the things that you were kind of going through. Um, anything else that you want to tell the, the people listening about your ninth grade year and kind of what, you know, what kind of experience you've had and, and kind of where you hope it goes from here. Uh, yeah, sure. I do have one last thing is this year is very weird and unexpected and it may affect you negatively or even positively. We always have to remember that everybody is getting through this. So we have to respect each other and think about each other. Every time we say any words to each other, we have to think about it. We have to think to be nice during these times, even all the time, just be nice to everybody. If this world was nice, I mean, it wouldn't be as different. We'd be all robots or something, I don't know. <laughs> well, you know. Nicer is just better. I think that's a great, great sentiment to end it on and a great way to end it is about just being nice to people and kind of thinking about all those good things, you know, and I think especially after you kind of go through with some of the things you've gone through this year, kind of looking back on all those good things that you now get to enjoy again, you kind of have a deeper appreciation for those things as well. So, so Grant, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to us about your post there on the message board. Um, hopefully other students, you know, will respond on the board and kind of, you know, we can open up some different conversations conversations, but I think yours was a very unique post. I'm, you know, I'm happy that you were able to share it with us and um, continued success uh, through your freshman year. And I guess I will see you uh, next Tuesday at the game club again. Yeah. If anybody wants to come down to the games club, it's always open to new members. There you go. Thanks. Thanks for the plug there for game club as well. So Grant, thanks a lot for joining us uh, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much.